Assalamu alaikum all. Can you hear my voice? Yes, okay. Yes, Ms. Amjad. As you have mentioned that you want to talk about the deadline of assignment. So we have confirmed this from our coordinator and according to him you have to submit the deadline is fixed so you have to submit your second assignment by 15th of march only okay there is no extension provided from his side so the deadline is fixed this time we have already discussed this matter with coordinator and according to him it should be submitted on time Yes, because of midterm. This is what we have discussed with him, but uh, the deadline is fixed. Yes. It's not in my hand actually, because it is same for all branches. So the final decision is made by coordinator. So, the next thing is about your midterm exam pattern. In your midterm exam, you will have multiple choice question. You will have true and false. There will be no fill in the blanks, okay? There will be no fill in the blanks, and then you will have short answer type questions. So, there will be five questions. The first one will be multiple choice question. You will have around 20 multiple choice question. Then you will have true and false, then true and false, then three short answer type question. This is regarding the pattern of your midterm exam. Yes, I know in 15 March you have your midterm exam, but we can't do anything. We have already discussed this matter with coordinator and he said that this time the deadlines are fixed and the students have to submit it by 15th of March. So this is what I have to inform you and if you want to convey your message you can mail him. Just put me in CC and mail him. Yes, a study guide. A study guide is only for final exam, not for midterm exam. So inshallah before your final exam, a study guide will be provided to you for this subject, but not for midterm exam. Yes, anything else that you want to discuss? No, it's, we cannot tell you from which chapters the questions will come. You have to study from all chapters, starting from chapter number 1 to chapter number 9. Yes. You have to go through the diagrams as well. So this is what I have told you that if you want to give any suggestion, you can mail directly to the coordinator and put me in CC. Because from our side, we have tried our label best. We have 
discuss these issues and still if you want to discuss it with coordinator you can mail him directly put me in CC so I think I should start it now it's 616 so in in the first few chapters, first two chapters rather, we can say we have an overview of networking and management of network and systems and we have also learned about the network technology and components that need to be managed and there are several management standards and models in existence for managing networks, systems and services. So. Uh, we can understand and uh, these concepts and we can see the differences that distinguish them so next in the next chapters we have discussed about uh, various network management models and protocols and we have seen international standards organization Yes, Ms. Amjad, regarding the deadline of assignment, it's fixed. You have to submit your second assignment by 15th of March. It's fixed. There is no change. Yes, we have already talked with the coordinator. We have discussed this issue. Now we have also seen international standards organization and see we are working in different branches and the policies that we are implementing it's common it's same for all branches it's not in the hand of one instructor to make changes whatever changes whatever policies are implemented that is common for all and the final decision is being made by coordinators so this is from coordinator that the deadlines are fixed and you have to submit your assignment by 15th of March so this is same for all branches not just for Riyadh female branch it's for all So I cannot go against coordinator, right? Okay, so we have international standard organization which has defined a generalized model that addresses all aspects of network management. Now we will cover uh, the different OSI architectures and models which deals with organization, information, communication and functional aspects. Uh, then we will discuss about the basics of formal language that is ACN.1 and the data structure that is used for management systems to store management information and which provide communication with each other. So these models are designed for management applications to manage networks, systems and services. And the fourth model that you can see over here that is functional model addresses these. The application falls into the categories of fault, configuration, performance, security and accounting. So in a global perspective, uh, three areas of network need managing they are network systems and services 
that is interlayer protocols and intralayer protocols. Yes, Miss Arva, important slide. No, it's just a revision. It's just a revision. All slides are important. All topics are important because we have limited time. So I have selected few topics and I'm discussing them. If you want me to discuss any particular topic, you can let me know. I will, I will uh, explain it first because I haven't received any mail from any of these students. I told you that go through all the topics. If you have any question, any query, you can mail me and I will discuss in my virtual lecture first. But I didn't receive any mail from any of the students. So I have selected some of the topics to cover in just one hour. So all topics are important. This is not an important topic. All topics are important. So the two leading models of network management are the internet model and open system interconnection models. We are studying these two models since uh, level five when we were in uh, computer networks. So the internet model is the most widely used for network management. It is a simple scalar model and it is easy to implement. Whereas the OSI model, which is object oriented, is more complex and harder to implement. So with the matured state of object oriented technology and the convergence of data and telecommunication technologies, object oriented implementation of network management has come into vogue. So you can see over here, here we have OSI network model which is an ISO standard and is most complete of all the models. It is structured and it addresses all aspects of management. This is a network management architectural model that comprises of four models. They are organization model, information model, communication model, and the functional model. Now the organization model describes the components of a network management system. It defines their functions and their infrastructure. So the organization model is defined in OSI systems management overview and it defines the terms like object, agent and manager. Now the OSI information model deals with the structure and the organization of management information and it specifies the structure of management information which we call as SMI and the information database management management information base that is MIB. So SMI describes how the management information is structured and MIB deals with the relationship and storage of management information. Now the third model that you can see over here is the communication model. So there are three components to this. Management application processes that function in the application layer, layer management between layers, and layer operation which is within the layer. So we will focus on the application processes basically. And the functional model is the fourth component of OSI management which deals with user oriented requirements of network management. Now see the organization model 
which describes the components of network management and their relationships. So we have network objects which consist of network elements and they are host, hubs, bridges, routers, etc. Now they can be classified into managed objects and unmanaged objects. Now the managed elements have a management process which is running in them and that is called agent. The unmanaged elements do not have management process running in them. So for example, one can buy a managed or unmanaged hub. Obviously the managed hub has management capability which is built into it and hence it is more expensive than the unmanaged hub which does not have an agent running in it. So the manager communicates with the agent in the managed element. Now the manager manages the managed element. So there is a database in the manager but not in the agent. So what does manager do? It queries and it receives the management data from the agent. It processes them and stores them in the database. The agent can also send minimum set of alarm information to the manager. Now you can see this figure. This is a two tier model and here we have three tier model. Now here in three tier configuration the intermediate layer acts as both agent and manager. As manager it collects the data from the network elements, it processes them and it stores the result in its database. As agent it transmits information to the top layer manager. So for example, we have an intermediate system and it is used for making statistical measurements on a network and it passes the information as needed to the top level manager. So alternatively an intermediate NMS that is network management system could be at the local site of a network and the information is passed on to a remote site. So network domains can be managed locally and a global view of the networks can be monitored by manager of managers that we call MOM, manager of managers, this one. This configuration basically uses an enterprise network management system and is applicable to organizations with sites distributed across cities. So it is also applicable to a configuration where vendor management systems manage the domain of their respective components and MOM that is manager of managers manages the entire network. So the network management systems can also be configured on a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. As you can see, so we can recognize the similarity between this and the client server architecture where we have a host server and it acts as a client also and as a server also. So an example of such a situation will be two network service providers and they need to exchange management information. And 
they are plan sharing the information between them. So from the user's point of view, the information traverses both the networks and it needs to be monitored end to end. So we have used the term network management system over here, that is NMS, to mean a system that runs a management process. It is not just a managed object. So the agent and the manager devices are defined as agent network management system and manager network management system. Now here we have information model and it is concerned with the structure and the storage of information. So for example, how information is structured and is stored in a library and is accessed by all. As we know that a book is uniquely identified by an international standard book number which we call as ISBN. It is basically 10 digit number identification and it refers to a specific edition of a specific book. Suppose we have ISBN number as 0, 1, 3, 4, 3 like this. So it refers to the book so and so and the author is so and so. So we can refer to a specific figure in the book by identifying a chapter number and a figure number. For example, figure 3.1 refers to figure 1 in chapter number 1 or chapter number 2. So there is a hierarchy of designation. That is, we have ISBN, then we have chapter, then we have figure. As you can see over here. So we have a hierarchy of designation that is ISBN then chapter then figure which uniquely identifies the object which is a figure in the book. So ISBN chapter and figure basically define the syntax of three pieces of information which is associated with the figure and the definition of their meaning in a dictionary will be the semantics associated with them. So the representation of objects and information that are relevant to their management forms the management information model. Now information on network components, as you can see over here, information on network components is passed between the agent and the management processes. So the information model basically specifies the information base to describe the managed objects and the relationship between the managed objects. So the structure defining the syntax and semantics of management information is specified by the structure of management information that we call SMI, structure of management information. And the information base is called management information base, that is MIB. So the MIB is used by both agent and the management processes. Remember this, it is used by both agent and management processes to store and exchange the management information. The MIB associated with an agent is called agent MIB and the MIB which is associated with a manager is designated as manager MIB. So the manager MIB basically consists of information on all the network components that it manages. Whereas the MIB which is associated with which is associated with an agent is called agent MIB and uh, the agent process needs to know only its local information. So for example, we have a country 
and it has may it may have many libraries so each library has an index of all the books in that location so it's this that is called its mib view so the central index in the country's main library which manages all other libraries has the index of all the books in all the country's libraries that we call as global manager mib view so here we have managed object managed object can be network element it can be hardware it can be it can be hubs bridges routers transmission facilities it can be non physical that means that means it can be a software that is programmed in algorithms and it has administrative information that is contact person name of group of objects etc next we have abstract syntax notation 1 now in both information model and communication model we have some functions so in these models the smi needs to be specified syntactically as well as semantically which will be the content so it is important for communication among systems that a formalized set of rules is agreed upon the structure and meaning of language of communication and which we call as syntax and semantics of the language so there are numerous sets of application and transport protocols and it is beneficial to choose a syntactical format for the language that specifies the management protocol in the application layer which is transparent to the rest of the protocol layer so one such format is an old and well proven format and that we call as abstract syntax notation 1 and this is used in network management so asn.1 is more than just a syntax it is a formal language and iso uh, for use with application layers for data transfer between systems it is also applicable within the system for clearly separating the abstract syntax and the transfer syntax at the presentation layer so we define abstract syntax as the set of rules used to specify the data types and structure for the storage of information the transfer syntax basically represents the set of rules for communicating information between systems so the abstract syntax will be applicable to the information model and the transfer syntax to the communication model the abstract syntax can be used with any presentation syntax depending on the medium of presentation this abstract syntax in asm.1 make it independent of the lower layer protocols so this is all that i want to discuss with you the last topic the last few topics that we have discussed were based on snmp standards which include the protocols and the management information basis and 
in the last chapters we have discussed about the tools and techniques that can be used for the management of networks using SNMT. We have discussed about various tools that falls into three basic categories that is status monitoring, traffic monitoring and route monitoring. And we have covered uh, up to chapter number 9, slide number 36, that is before MIB engineering. So this is all that I want to discuss with you. If you have any question, you can ask or you want me to discuss any particular topic, I will discuss it because still we have time. Yes, I am waiting for your queries.